Ezra chapter 9. <clears throat> now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, these things are done when they arrived in the city, they weighed out the, the, the goods, everything that was to be delivered to Jerusalem, made sure everything was there, what they started with, after they reported to the king's people. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. So the, loot, the, the, the leaders of the congregations come to Ezra and they report the people of Israel. That's the common Jew. The priests, well those are the ones that supposedly service to God. The Levites, they're the ones who are service to the priests have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. And you know this is the area that I'm going to park on. It has brought, been brought to, to Ezra's attention that the Jews have not separated themselves. They're being with the people of the world. And doing according to the abominations. Well, that was Solomon's trouble. He married all the women of all the lands and got involved in their religions. That's what the church has done today. She's married into all the religions. And if you were to pick up uh, the tale of two Babylons, everything goes back to the foundation of Babylon. The Nimrod. It's nothing new under the sun. I don't care how many times you put Jesus Christ's name involved in it. It's not Christian. I don't care who the people are. If they don't love Jesus Christ, they're not Christians. And if they're not Christians, you're not to have anything to do with them. They are an abomination. They will die and go to hell. You will lose works. Christians don't want to separate themselves. They don't want to live apart from the world. They want to hang on and scream on. What I mean by scream on, you get a kid that's in a toy store, he screams out the door because he didn't get what he wanted. Even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Emmer, well, so far all these people were to be gone and dead. God told them to wipe them all out, and they didn't do it, and here we are in. 457 B.C. approximately, and the sins of the people not doing what God told them to do has shown up again. If they were got rid of the people like they were supposed to and stayed out of Egypt, they'd be stewing the land and they would not need to rebuild the temple. People don't realize when you rebel against God, God is holy. He's going to put judgment upon you. I don't care if you want to say God is love and all oh, junk. Because the Bible says that God records, I hate Esau. How's that? The Amorites, the Jews were to leave them alone. The Moabites, those are the ones from Lot. Lot was not supposed to journey with Abraham. On several occasions, when when God called, I mean Abraham called upon God, God would not answer him in the book of Genesis until Lot separated himself. Egyptians, they were told not to go back to Egypt. And Amorites. God has told us in his words, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I don't care what you like. I don't care what you think. God never asked your opinion. And you'll stand at a loss if you don't want to listen. You don't want to do what God told you to do? Lose. Be a loser. Plain and simple. This is what we're reading. This is what black and white, right in front of your eyes. You can check it out. Chapter 9. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves. Sins of Solomon. They didn't learn. And their sons. So they were giving their daughters to marriage to the people they weren't supposed to. And they were giving their sons to marriage to the people they weren't supposed to.
Paul says in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 7, I believe it is. But it's over there in 1 Corinthians. You're only to marry in the Lord. If you don't want to marry in the Lord, don't blame God. He's giving you the commandment. So that the holy seed, this is Israel. These are God's people. They were to be a particular people. We are a particular people. We are a holy seed. We don't go to a temple. Our body is a temple of God. We are called the sons of God. Yeah, but we go around, hang out, and live with, and, and have fun with Satan. And the Bible calls that adultery, and it calls it fornication. They're just not sexual sins. They're back in the land. They built the temple. They, they, they got everything like they're supposed to. The sacrifices are going up, but there's still sin in the camp. And mingle themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Everyone is involved. The priests, the Levites, the people, the rulers. Wickedness. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, clothes that he's wearing, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard. You say, what a madman. I'll show you Jesus Christ. You think I'm lying? They plucked his hair off his head and off his beard. False sins. Ezra's blaming himself for the faultiness of what's going on in the nation. Almost like he should have taken care of this before they left Babylon the first time to head back and build. He's astonished. A stone aid means astonished. He can't believe it. Here are God's people messing around with the wrong people. Think what you want. There it is. A man of God. The book is named after him. He's one of God's people. And people don't like it. That's, I don't care. Then were assembled unto me. Me. Look who's talking. Ezra. Everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. Conviction. Because of the transgression. Well, we saw abomination, now we see transgression of those that have been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice all day long. Today you get the morning message, the message preached. You go up to the altar, P5405, you go up and go home, and you don't even remember what, what it was in the afternoon. You come back, and when the preacher in the, in the Sunday night service mentions something about the morning service, people are like, oh, I don't remember. No, just say, I don't care. At the evening sacrifice, I rose from my heaviness. That don't mean he was fat. The burden of sin in the camp. You could be 500 pounds, but I tell you, when you got the burden of sins on you, it's heavy. And having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees 
and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. Who else is he going to turn to? The nation's in the disgrace. The leaders are in disgrace. Can't go to the priest. They're in disgrace. Not going to go to a shrink. The only thing you go to is God. And said, oh my God. Oh, look at that. OMG. Oh my God. OMG. Oh my God. Press one for English, and people don't even know how to speak English today. I am ashamed. If only the church was in a shame what was going on. And blush to lift up my face to thee. So not only is he on his knees, he's got his hands spread out. He's looking down. He ain't looking up. He can't face God in the condition he is in. He don't dare lift, lift his head up. My God. For our iniquities are increased over our head, drowned in sin. The trash can is full and overfilling. And Beelzebub is buzzing around. On our trespasses is grown up unto the heavens. He's confessing. Gone up to the heavens. Well, that's an expression been used by God's cup. Once it's filled, then the wrath of God pours out. Ezra's praying in such a way that their sins are so vile that he's looking at that temple we just we just finished. We just built that. Man, God's going to destroy it again. We're not worthy to build that temple. When the men of Babel built that tower, we're going to, we're going to build to the heavens. God had to come down and stop them. Since the days of our fathers... We have been in great trespass unto this day. Just going back to, to Jerusalem doesn't, doesn't heal. Listen, these religions that go on these pilgrimages to these mountains, to these cities, to these rivers, that don't clean you. You can have five million uh, pilgrimages. They're not going to save you. Only the blood of Jesus Christ will save you today. Back then, Ezra's time is going to the God of the temple, of the God of the heavens, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and bringing a sacrifice offering that you were to bring. Pilgrimages don't work. They just made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in the last chapter, and look where they are. They're just as worse as they were before. They are in the same sin of Solomon. So making a journey somewhere does not wash your sins away. There's two there. Get that, read that, know that, teach that to any religion that has a pilgrimage. And a lot of those pilgrimages of those religions, the women have no part in it. What? A woman doesn't get saved? According to their religion? For our iniquities, we have we, our king's rulership, our priests, those who are supposed to be of God, been delivered to the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to the captivity, to a spoil, to the confusion of face, as it is this day. And now, for a little space, grace. Being in Jerusalem is grace. Have been shown from the Lord. You better give all your grace credit to God. 
When any grace has been shown to you, you better give God the credit and not man. I mean, it was king. It was the king that told him to go. It was the king that made the decree. It was the king that gave him the gold. It was the king that gave him the silver. It was the king to say, you know, I'll send you troops if you need it. But it is God that gave him the grace. It is God that protected him. God used the king. Lord our God, to leave us on raiment, to escape. It's the grace of God that you still have people running around called Jews. Had not been the grace of God, Satan would have loved to destroy them all. The United Nuts would love to des destroy them all. The Middle East would love to wipe them out totally off the map. But the grace of God that the Jews are still here, the Jews are not the church, the Jews are not Gentiles. The Jews are of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are God's people, and God ain't done with them. They're going to go through a period called Jacob's trouble, seven years of tribulation, before their Messiah comes and gets them. But God's going to have to whip them for being bad little children. God ain't done with them yet. It's the grace of God that God fulfilled his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that there's still a raiment. There are still Jews today. You can't find a Babylonian. You can't find a true, you know, they, let's go back to the Greek. You can't find a true Greek. You can't find a Macedonian. You can't find somebody of Tyre. They're gone. There's only one nation, there's only one race of people who's been of all above nations of all races, and that's the Jew. And everybody's been trying to kill them and discriminate them and get rid of them and wipe them. They can't because they're God's people. Why? Because this verse said grace. Now you put that under a Christian for a moment. We're only surviving by the grace of God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Outside of that, we're nothing. To escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. Now the expression for that is where you hang up your hat to stay. It's a nail you put in the walls where you hang your hat. That's home. That's what he's saying. It's a place to call home. Where the Jew could go up, they put that sampler, home sweet home, hanging from there. They can't say that today. But it's going to be in a holy place. You think that place over there today is holy? No. You're going to have to have a new earth. Without sin. Without Satan. Without the serpent. Without sin. Without suffering. Without pain. That's going to be the holy place. That our God may lighten our eyes. Give light to. Well, Jesus Christ is the light, according to John chapter 1. They didn't see the light. For their deeds are wicked. They loveth the, the darkness. So they crucified their Savior. That's why they're scattered today. That's why they're in captivity all around the world today. Because they rejected God. But God has not rejected them. And give us a little reviving in our bondage. There's where you get revival. God come back to us. Give us a little help in bondage. We want a revival today, but what bondage are we in? What suffering are we in today in America? Yeah, we got Christians today by the Muslims. And by the Catholics are being persecuted. But what about the American church? Because the AC breaks down, that's, that's persecution. Maybe you have a power out from a storm, that's persecution. Listen, I've seen videos the last, this week alone where street preachers are being beat up by those gay, happy people. You want persecution? You want bondage? It'll come. 
For we are bondmen. Yet our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. Exodus chapter 1 and 2 all over again. But have extended mercy unto us in sight of the kings of Persia. Grace and mercy. Grace is from God. Mercy was what, what God allowed those kings to do for these people. Cyrus did not have to obey God. Like the church doesn't obey God today. Let my people go back into the land. No, Lord, I'm not going to do that. I enjoy them being here. Don't blame me. What did Pharaoh say? No, I'm not going to let him go. Give me everything you got, God. I'm not going to let him go. Am I lying or am I not? So what's the church say today? God says, go ye all the world. No, don't want to. I don't want to go. I got a comfort zone. So it's mercy that King Cyrus said, yes, I'll go. Pharaoh showed no mercy, and look what happened to him and his people. He lost everything. You know what happens when a Christian doesn't show mercy when God tells him to go tell lost people about him? He's going to lose everything at the judgment seat of Christ. Maybe on the earth, too. We're saved by grace. We are left here for mercy to tell other people about God's grace. Why else did God leave us here for? What other reason? There is none. But to be a witness. And those that get saved to train them up. Because God is not willing that any perish. But all. You wouldn't think by the church today that that was the only reason why we're here today. Inside the kings of Persia to give us a reviving. There's that word again. A reviving to get back to God when they weren't with God. They were not with God in Babylon. What men do you read about from Babylon? Meshach, no, the three boys, the Shadrach, Meshach, and the girl, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. How many other names do you read about? Not many. But God... They were away from God, and God brought them back. That's reviving. To set up the house of our God, which is just which has already happened. You say, what about the Christian? Our bodies are the temple of God. We are bought with a price. Why don't we set up our bodies for God? Doesn't the Bible say in uh, Romans or Corinthians, I forget what it says, that we are to present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God? Only on Sundays. It's amazing. To repair the desolations thereof. Repair the sins that are in our life. Repair the broken down foundations. Repay, repay, repair where the devil's taking stones out of our, our, our fortress. Repair where those wedges have been put in. And to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. We're going to put a wall 
in a gate. If you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, come on in. You don't stay outside. Now that you're saved, you don't want to live for Christ, get outside. You want to live for Christ, you want to do right, you need help, come on in. That's plain and simple. That's Bible doctrine. And now, O oh, oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. It's repenting, it's confession, being honest. Which thou hast commanded by thy servants the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land, with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now, that was the land before... Israel went in there. It was a filthy land. It was a land where they gave their children over to Molech. It was a land that they sacrificed and made bread to Ashtoreth. It was a place where they worshipped Baal. And they, they turned brown or red and they flipped themselves over half naked and lay before Mr. Sun God to get themselves all sun and tan again. Where they worshipped him coming up in the morning, the resurrected Baal. Where they look at the stars and say, oh, when you wish upon the first star and all the other stuff. And, you know, this star over here and that star over there means I'm going to have a bright future. And if I read the tea leaves or knock bumps on your head, whatever. The land has wooden idols, golden idols, and every idol. That was the land before Israel went in there. Israel was supposed to go in that land, clean it all up. You know why America's in the state she is in today? Because the church has not cleaned up. Had the church stayed clean and stayed proper to the word of God, everything would have been hunky-dory. But they didn't read the scriptures where Paul said, the church is going to end in apostasy. The, it says in the book of Revelation that Laodicean church, she's going to be making God sick. Listen, when the church says, oh, revival, 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 that's what they said. That's what the Laodicean church said. We, we have no good, we have everything. We have no need of God. We, well, look at everything hunky-dory. Look how well we are. That's the Laodicean church age. We need to look at Israel's history, because that's where we are today. Listen, the church ain't going to have a great revival. Things ain't going to get perfect. God's going to call us where? He's going to call us out of the land. The rapture. That's our next great event in Christianity. Like this guy's listening to today. If they really believe the rapture is going to happen, why are they building $20 million churches if God is coming tomorrow? If Jesus Christ is coming back within a year, but we don't know when. But if Jesus Christ is coming back, why are we building a $30, $30 million church? Why are we not cleaning up our lives? If we really believe that Jesus Christ is coming back possibly right now, why are we not living our life perfection? Look what, it, look what the Jews were when Jesus came the first time. They were a pathetic nation, sickly, of diseases that nobody could heal. Look at where we are in the world today. We are killing our own selves with the food we're eating. And buying more. To kill us self more. 
You, well, I'll go grow, I'll go put a garden in my backyard. We have soaked so much fertilizer, so much bud killers, so much junk in the ground, even that's not coming up healthy. And if you did, well, you got the air pollution and, and the water pollution and all that going right back in. We're a mess. The revival we need is God. That's what Ezra's crying. We need God. God is absent. Which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land which ye go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons. No intermarriage. In other words, the parents were agreeing with the intermarriage. They weren't trying to stop it. Neither take your, take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever. You know, we are to live in a world, but we're not to live by the world. We need money to survive, but money ain't our God. If you can't find a born-again, Bible-believing Christian that is serious about serving God, then you don't get married. Well, I got it. No, you don't have to nothing. You can't find anybody who's going to serve God and do right and can't be a proper friend, then you go friendless and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, Demas is going back to Thessalonica. Bye, Demas. See you later. You don't want to serve the Lord? Goodbye. See ya. Only Luke is with me. Luke is a faithful companion. Thank God for him. That ye may be strong. We're weak. We got weak Christians. People think they can lose it. That's weakness. When the scriptures say you can't. Even it says when you don't take part of the Lord's Supper right. Some are weak. Physical and spiritual. And eat the good of the land. And leave it for inheritance to your children forever. That's a promise that God has left to the Jew. That's not happening today, folks. Don't think it is. I don't care how much money you can send over to the, the plant a tree in Jerusalem. You know what I love about what the Bible says about the millennium? I don't know if I'm going to eat that. But it says a farmer is going to plant the seed. And right after him it says his wife is going to pick the fruits of the ground. I love that to be tomato plants. You put the seed in the ground and she's grabbing tomatoes that are ready and ready to go. That's scripture. You're going to have a, a, a line of lamb laid, laid together. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds. Being in Babylon, being destroyed. This city, as I was looking around, this city is destroyed because of sin. You know what the American church has not seen yet? It's beginning. She hasn't seen a destroyed nation because of sin. It's getting there. She thinks, oh, if we vote for a new president, everything's going to be hunky dory. I don't know how long America's going to last, but it ain't going to last long. We ain't got no money. And for our great trespass, great trespass, seeing that our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Oh, you mean the Jews? You mean we deserve more? You see how rebelling against God is? When you understand that, you will understand completely on how much Jesus Christ suffered for us.
how did he walk carrying that cross when 12 hours before that he was whipped and beaten by the, the, the priest guard they covered him and busted him in the face and said come on guess who did that Jesus then they turned him over to Pilate and Pilate took vicious Roman soldiers and whipped and pulled the hair out of our Savior and beaten him and put the crowns upon his head. He was a bloody massacre of mess. The Bible says you couldn't even tell that what his vicious was. It said that his back was plowed like it was like it was fields, like a plows going through there because of the cat and nine tails. How on earth did he ever get to Calvary? The Bible says that he, he fell under the cross. They grabbed a man to, to take to finish the cross with him. How did he do that? With all that pain and suffering, he put his hands down for the nails to go in. He laid his feet for the nails to go in. How did he do that? And yet he still told that dying thief, Today I'll be in paradise with you. While his body is drowning in his fluids. But yet we deserve more than what we got. It was all laid upon Jesus Christ. There, thank God for what he's done for us. And has given us such deliverance as this. Our salvation is only upon Jesus Christ. It is vile. I'm going to tell you again. It is vile to say to anybody that baptism can save you after what Jesus did. It is vile to say if you were to eat the blood and drink the, the uh, if you were to drink the blood, eat the body of Jesus after what Jesus done for us. It is vile to say somebody, if you give enough money, or if you be this degree, or whoever you can be, you will earn your way to, into heaven. And Peter will stand there and weigh your goods out. It is vile. It is wicked. And it's to those people that will say, Jesus, didn't we do this? Jesus, didn't I do that? And the Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. But Lord, never knew you. Go to hell. By the way, when he says that, the nail prints are in his hands. When he directs them to go to hell, those nail prints, what was the way, the truth, and the life, will direct them to eternity to live with their God, Satan. Should we again break thy commandments? Doesn't Paul say, you know, that we're, since we're saved, what, shall we continue in sin? God forbid, no. Well, I'm saved. I can do anything I want it. No. And join a feminine. That's the word that was used with, with Solomon in Egypt. The feminine with the people of these abominations. People call them friends. People call them family. People call them what? Co-workers, whatever you call them, God says abomination. They have rejected my son. Think about it that way. They have rejected my son. Wouldst not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us? So that there should be no remnant nor escaping. Ezra's saying, listen, I mean, if we just continue. Ezra's wrong, in a way. 
Because God promised Abraham. God promised David. There will be someone always to sit on the throne. There always will be that seed. That's how honest God is. God will never, cannot, and will never lie. He made a promise to David. He made a promise to Abraham. And God has to keep it. No matter how wicked the Jew gets. No matter how wicked a Christian gets. God sealed us with the Holy Spirit. He can't deny you. You can't lose it. Jesus said, listen, I, I, I'm misquoting the verse and I'm sorry, but I can't even deny myself. Just because you deny the Lord doesn't mean Christ will deny you. God is a merciful, wonderful, great God. O oh Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. Yes, he is. For we remain yet escaped only by God. We're only left here to serve God and to do what God's purpose is for mankind. To tell them about Jesus and to raise them up and to be proper Christians and to do what he wants them to do. Go and tell other people about Jesus. Would have been a, just a great, wonderful thing. God said, okay, you're saved? Yes, Lord, I'm saved. And he calls us home. That would have been a wonderful thing. Absent from the body, be present with the Lord. But that's not how it happens. O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet, esca yet escaped. As it is this day, behold, we are before thee in our trespasses. We're in our sins. A Christian can't say that if he confesses the blood of Jesus Christ. Like Brother Knox said last night, I think it was Brother Knox. He says, listen, I can remember my own sins. I, 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 Lord, help me with his sins. I, I haven't, and the Lord looks at him like, what are you talking about? The sins are in my head. What sins? The ones in the past. They're gone. When you put them under the blood, they're gone. The only thing you, I, the only thing you tell Satan, they're under the blood. Fight it out with God. Go up to God and tell him about that sin, and even God's going to tell you what sin. We're not to be in our trespasses. They're to be. We're to confess our sins. We're to put them under the blood and get right and try to keep on doing right. If we're not fighting our sins, then we're not in victory. You say victory means you win. No, victory means when you tell your flesh, no. But I did it. What well, did you fight? Well, yeah, I fought. But I still did it. Are you sorry you did it? Yeah. Did you put it under the blood? Yeah, that's victory. Every day is a fight. For we cannot stand before thee because of this. You know, we can't stand before God unless we become Christ-like. We're going to look and act like Jesus Christ one day. That's the only way we can stand in his presence. Paul saw Jesus and his eyes went bad. 